Exciting news! Nuxt 4.0 is officially here. In this video, let's take a quick look at what that means feature-wise and take a look at some of the breaking changes that it involves. So, in order to talk about features, let's first take a look at the blog post, the official blog post announcing Nuxt 4.0. So, what's new? Well, there is a new project structure that separates a lot of the folders that you're used to putting in your root project before into an app directory. While folders like public and namely, most importantly, server are kept in the root directory. The reason for this is it helps keep your code base separate from node modules and the .git file, which makes file watchers faster, especially on Windows and Linux, meaning a better development experience. It also gives your IDE better context about whether you're working on client-side code, that is app-specific code, or server-side code, things that run in the world of Nitro inside of the server directory. Nuxt also provides updated UI templates. All the starter templates have a all new look with improved accessibility, default titles, and just a little bit of polish to make them nicer. One of the most important things that I think ships with Nuxt 4 is this smarter data fetching. We'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but suffice it to say that data fetching in Nuxt 4 is just a whole lot nicer to work with than it was in Nux 3. Next, we have a better TypeScript experience, mostly resulting from that separation between the app directory and the server directory, but also due to this shared folder that can include helper functions that are meant to run on both the server side in Nitro land and on the client side in Nuxt land. Finally, in parallel with the release of Nuxt version 4, the Nuxt team has produced a faster CLI and development experience. You can read the details about that here in the announcement for Nuxt 4.0 release. Okay, so of course all these amazing new features don't come without a few breaking changes. What do those breaking changes look like? Well, let's head over to the official upgrade guide in order to learn more. This guide is extremely thorough and breaks down every single breaking change into its own dedicated section. But don't let this long list scare you. There are impact levels provided with each breaking change, and most of them are marked as minimal. In fact, there is only one breaking change with an impact level of significant, and that is the new directory structure. It will, of course, affect every single Nuxt project out there. However, migrating your app structure is not even required. If you wish to keep your current folder structure, Nuxt will auto-detect it and it'll work just as it was before. Nice. So that's the only significant change that applies to absolutely everybody. But there's also about seven breaking changes that are labeled as an impact level moderate or medium. Let's take a look at those now. So the first one is labeled Singleton Data Fetching Layer. This breaking change consists of several different aspects. Okay, first of all, now there are shared refs for calls to use async data or use fetch that share the same key. That means if you call use fetch in one component and then use fetch in another component with the same key, the data error and status that you get out of use fetch in both components will actually refer to the exact same reactive refs. This is really cool for the sake of global state management. Now we also get more control inside of the get cached data function inside of Nux4. Why? Well, because there are many different reasons as to why a request is, is triggered. And we need to be able to know that reason in order to determine if we want to get the cache data or go back to the server to get fresh data. That's exactly where this new context option for get cached data comes in. It provides a cause property to give you the reason why we're trying to get more data. That is, is this the initial request for data, the first time the use fetch has run? Is it a refresh triggered by a change 
in the URL. Is it a manual refresh triggered by the call to the refresh function? Or is it a request triggered by a change in one of the use fetch watchers? Well, it could be any one of those four. And now we can check that cause inside of our get cache data function and return the cache data or let the request go back to the server if we want to. Next, we also get reactive key support, which is just a win all around. No real breaking change there because before keys were only could only be plain values, but now you can use computed refs, plain refs, or getter functions as keys. And then lastly, when the last component using the data fetched with use async data is unmounted, Next now removes that data to avoid ever growing memory usage. All right, let's take a look at the next moderate impact level breaking change. This one is labeled normalized component names. Why? Well, view will now generate component names that match the next pattern for component naming. What does that mean exactly? Well, let's say you have a user directory under your components directory. And in that user directory, you have a profile.view component. Well, the auto imported name for that component is a combination of the folder name and the file name. So when we go to use that component, we would call it user profile. In Nuxt version three though, if you tried to pass that component's name to keep alive, then you would actually have to use just the file name without its parent directory in there. And this is a little bit confusing. They're actually referring to the exact same component, even though they have different names. So now in Nuxt 4, when using Keep Alive, the naming is the same. This applies to usages of Keep Alive, but also when working with the find component function from view test details. The last moderate impact level change is more granular inline styles. What is that? Well, Nux will now only inline styles for view components and not global CSS. Previously, Nux would inline all CSS, including go global styles, and remove link elements to separate CSS files completely. Now though, Nux only does this for CSS instead of view components, which previously produced separate chunks of CSS, this is just to strike a good balance between reducing separate network requests, just as before, as well as allowing caching of a single global CSS file and reduce the document download size of the initial request. If you want to revert to the previous behavior, you can set features.inline styles to true. Now let's take a look at the changes with the impact level of medium. I'm not sure what the difference between medium and moderate is, if I'm honest. Perhaps they should really all be named the same thing, but nonetheless, we have seven medium and moderate all together. Three moderate and then four medium. So what is our first medium impact level change? Shared pre-render data. This change enables a previously experimental feature to share data from use async data and use fetch calls across different pages. If you want more information on this change, you can see the original PR, but suffice it to say, it's just going to make building your statically generated pages a lot faster. If you have a statically generated site, then definitely explore this further. The next medium level change is the alignment of the pending value in use async data and use fetch. Previously, the pending value was always true until the first request of use fetch or use async data was made. Now though, pending will be false until that first request is made. Essentially now pending is inextricably linked or computed from the status value. So you can be assured that whenever status is equal to a string of pending, the pending variable is also a Boolean of true. Next to last, we have a key change behavior in use async data and use fetch. So when you're using reactive keys in either of these two functions, 
Nuxt will automatically refetch the data whenever that key changes. However, when immediate is set to false, use async data will only fetch the data when the key changes if the data has already been fetched once. Previously though, use fetch had slightly different behavior. It would always fetch that data when the key changed, even if it hadn't already been fetched once. So now use fetch and use async data behave in a consistent way. That is by only fetching the data when the key changes, if the data has already been fetched once. This is just a change to make things more predictable and consistent. The last medium impact level change that we have is directory index scanning. This applies to child folders inside of your middleware folder. Previously, those folders were not scanned for an index file. Only the files directly inside of middleware were. But now you can organize your middleware with supporting files inside of your own directories and have them auto-registered if you want to. This makes the behavior of auto-registration with middleware more consistent with the auto-registration behavior of plugins. Awesome, that's it for the breaking changes that will most likely impact your project. All the other changes have a minimal impact level and most likely won't affect you, or if they do, won't cause real significant behavior change in your app if you miss the migration of them. Do take a look at them in the migration guide though. Just to double check yourself, there are only 16 of them. If you'd like to do an even deeper dive into the updates made in Nuxt 4 and get more coding examples to help you better understand those changes, then I recommend you check out our course over at View School, What's New in Nuxt 4. It goes over a lot of the topics that we talked about in this video, but goes more in depth with code examples for things like that singleton data fetching layer so you better understand how those refs are shared. It talks about some other breaking changes in Nux4 that we didn't really discuss. It gives more in-depth examples of shallow data reactivity in use async data and use fetch, and even takes a look at using CodeMod as an automated helper for migrating your Nux3 project to Nux4.